Good morning, gang. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Quite bright sunny today here. It looks a bit dull now, but it's, it's quite a sunny day. The sky isn't gray there. It's actually blue, but the camera is blown out a bit. So. The merchants and bars and everybody else, they're happy today. It's been rainy and drizzly, so they're happy to have a clear weather weekend. Here's the sun coming there. There's a little bit of haze up there. So. Mind your elders, are there any such things? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good morning, gang. Actually, in the few minutes before the stream, <coughs> In the few minutes before the stream opened this morning, we had tons of truck action. The, uh, the blue garbage truck guy that does the Korean restaurant, he came already, but with a different truck. So I guess his blue garbage truck is maybe in for maintenance or something. So he came with a white flatbed and threw all the garbage on top of it and drove away. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, we're back exactly where we promised we would be, where we threatened we would be. We're on the last color block still. Did I say it might be finished on Saturday? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> so many jobs. Okay, let me get the camera set up here just a sec. If I'm going to be shooting here, that means the camera has to come in. Here, we've clearly got the exposure to change, just a second, one thing at a time here. Where are we going to be? Okay, we'll start there. It's clearing. I know part of it's going to be crunch, crunch. I've been clearing away actually this morning while I've been waiting. What we've got a left on this one is we've got to, you can see there's some white spaces that still have to be cleared. That one's done. I did that last night. Another one here. So we've got three spaces that have to be cleared out. That shouldn't take too long. Then when that's done, we'll flip over to the back and we'll pick up again with the, uh, with the knife cutting. So we, could, we can see all three of the different jobs here today. The final, this is stage three, then we can see some cutting stage one. Ayana, Ayana san, who's Ayana san? Ayano san, one of our workers, wanted me to remind you to please explain how I made the carving tool from needles. Do I know anything about this? One of the tools we use is, is just simply a sewing machine needle, that's all. I'm not sure what there is to explain, what, what, uh, what we're talking about here. We, most of our clearing tools are actual blades. They're steel with a hard steel and a soft steel. They are sharpened and they cut wood. They're actual chisels. But one of them we've got here is not a chisel. It doesn't actually cut wood. It just pokes stuff. We'll see it. We're going to use it this morning quite a lot. It's just made from a sewing machine needle. You can see the groove in the top of it. And there's nothing really special to explain. It's a piece of wood with a hole drilled in the end. The needle popped into the hole to keep it stiff, make a rough shape on the sharpening stone. And it's good to act as a pry bar when you want to poke stuff, when you need to get into little, uh, little places, you poke with it. You don't have to worry about it breaking. You can't poke and smash with a chisel because you'll break the tip. But this one just can poke around and bang around and it's not going to break because it's really, really strong. I guess it's stainless steel, is it? I don't know. No, this would have had a hole. That's long gone. I know. Yeah, I think we don't need to explain so much. Sure that would have. What was the original shape of the sewing machine needle? I don't remember. It had, a, it was a big industrial type sewing machine needle, so it had some kind of hole at the tip, and then it went back, and it had a thing where it gets where it gets, you know, into the sewing machine. It, it would have been, from my point of view, it would sew up and down, up and down, up and down like this. So nothing. So I just got the sewing machine needle. This part of it has now been jammed into a piece of wood. And then the end, I just filed it off. As I said, on the grindstone, just filed it off to the shape. The hole is long gone. Just a bit of groove there. 
That's all you're seeing here. So again, nothing special. All we want is a piece of really, really strong steel that we can use without worrying about breaking the tip. We all know about breaking the tips of our knives here. Um, the, the, I think the original story, when I, it may have been in, even in that video, Ito-san, the old carver, Ito-san, told me about this. And the, the, I could like parody the conversation as a Three Stooges kind of conversation. We're talking about something. He had passed me his, and I was looking at it, trying to figure out what it was. And he said something like, Hadi, blah, blah, it's a needle. And then I, I was waiting for him to say more, and he took my waiting to say more as being incomprehension. And he said the word tento, tento. I remember this. It's probably in that video with Peter Barrican. Tento, tento. I'm like, what's my reaction? He's yelling the word tento, tento. What are we talking about? And he was just trying to tell me that it was a strong sewing machine needle of the type that was used to, to work on canvas, tents. I guess maybe near him there's a place that does this, tents and awnings and stuff. But just like t 10 times he repeated this word tento, tento. <laughs> before I didn't understand what he was talking about. So long story short, no special story. It's a strong piece of spring steel, stainless steel, jammed into a piece of wood. Sharpen it to the shape you want and just use it as a pry bar. Someone's broken many needle sewing jeans, so they do break okay <laughs> whenever they don't break with the kind of stress that I put on them here. So. Vivid KP says she's made chisels out of needles. If you can sharpen it, great. Normally, spring steel like this doesn't normally sharpen, but okay. Anyway, there it is. So it, it, Tento, Tento. I can still remember the guy. You know, he was funny. People have this impression, I, say, I get emails now and then about this, uh, my, my master, the master who I learned from, you know, they're, and they're speaking of Ito-san, the guy who's in that video, that Remembering a Carver video. And he wasn't my master, he wasn't my teacher, he wasn't my oyakata, I never became his apprentice. He always said no, 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 he didn't, you know, he didn't want to, want that to be in that position. And I only met the guy like twice, I was at his workshop twice. Other than that, I saw him at the drinking drinking sessions, I saw him at the meetings. But he wasn't my teacher from whom I received all the wisdom passed down over the years. And we had two meetings with a TV company. Once it would have been, I guess, halfway through my poet series, and once again at the end of the poet series. And, and there's this impression that this guy was my uh, was my teacher. You know, and, Nope, 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 nope. You could count the number of meetings I had with craftsmen on like two hands all through those years making the poet's prints. You know? Dave learned his craft through years of study with traditional Japanese craftsmen in Tokyo. Yeah, right. They learned his craft through hours of study with traditional craftsmen in Tokyo. That's the actual story. <laughs> it was partly me and partly them, you know. It, at the very beginning, I had the idea that I would come here and would indeed learn from older craftsmen. It didn't work that way for a number of reasons. It stacked up, you know. The, the prime, the first one being that we couldn't afford to live in Tokyo. This, when I came here, it was the bubbling years, and we just could not afford even a rudimentary apartment in Tokyo, near where these people were working. But then the second one, when I did get to, to meet some of them, this is 1989, I finally started getting good meetings with craftsmen in 1989 after I'd been here three years. It became obvious that uh, there was going to be no master-apprentice relationship. Just those years were completely gone, completely behind us. 
None of the people could do this because they couldn't offer work to any potential apprentice. And the original system was you worked with the guy and he, he gave you work, you know, whatever. He, he, uh, you learned from him while doing work and none of them had any work. So the, the whole concept was just, uh, just irrelevant. You know? and people, they see the carving video and, and I had mentioned in there that Ito-san did not accept me as, a, as an apprentice and didn't want me as an apprentice. And people have taken this quite negatively. Yo, guys, they didn't want to share their secrets and how can they be so selfish and stuff like that. And that's nothing to do with it. There just simply wasn't any work. So when I was asked to spend time with them, they were under the assumption that I'd be looking for work as well, and they couldn't do this. Speak up, talk louder. It's really, okay, let's max out this mic. It is now maxed. It's at what's called zero dB. The mic is maxed, but the mic is there. <sighs> paper is out, yes, paper is out, paper is out. The only person coming today is Ishikawa-san. Ishikawa-san is coming today. I'm not sure what else I can do about the volume. It's at max. I can't do anything else. We tried before, you know, to put a mic on myself, but this modern Mac, this ultimate glorious, fabulous modern Mac, doesn't have audio input. We have three USB-C inputs, one of which is Ethernet, one of which is outside camera, one of which is inside camera. And the camera, the video adapters that I use, both came with an extreme warning. Do not use with a hub. You must cl connect this thing directly with their supplied cable directly to the computer. So for me to get a microphone going through a USB input means I need a hub because I've got three USB ports used up for this stream. So it's not that I'm ignoring it, it's that uh, Can I boost audio? It's at max. I have boosted it to the absolute max. There is no, uh, no, it's not shut down. So the, the mic on the Mac is, I'm sure, a very nice mic, but the problem is it's over there and I'm over here. Anyway, 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 I'll try and remember. Speak up! Okay, here's our needle at work. Just stick it in there and pry this stuff out. Pick, pick, pick.
video's okay, whatever. What do we have news and stuff updates locally? I'm not sure if there is anything really here. Not nothing much going on. The various construction projects around us here are all uh, moving along as far as I can see. The people across the street who are renovating their very, very, very old bar seem to have finished the deconstruction part of their project. The place now seems like an empty shell when I walked by yesterday coming back from the 7-Eleven. And the door open there and it just now seems like a shell just there they're pretty much now down to the down to the concrete or down to the front of the frame of the building so i guess that means any day now they're going to start to reconstruction whether they're going to do it themselves or whether there's a company coming in to do it for them i don't know meanwhile the place at the corner is coming along they still have the for lease sign up on that one which kind of surprises me I guess they're asking an awful lot of money for it. And, uh, the place behind me, the bar on or Li Li, and what's it called? Li Chan's place. Li 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 Chan place behind me. I strolled around there again yesterday too. I'm kind of curious how they're doing because all the bars on the main street are doing a roaring business. But this place behind us, because they're tucked on a back street, they really do not seem to be doing well. It's very, very, very quiet. Very quiet. And there's the girl outside who stands there and she looks hopefully up towards the main corner here where there's a bajillion people going by but they're just too far down there. What is it? They're about 10 meters down that side street and uh, it's not looking good for them. So I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It's none of my business. I have no stake in their business back there. But I have now seen, this is the third restaurant cafe type place I've seen in that same building. And the first two didn't make it at all. There was just no no traffic back there. So whether these guys have better social media power, I don't know, or they're just thinking that there can never be too many bars in Saxa. I don't know their their viewpoint on this. But so far they're not doing anything that would make me think they're gonna be successful there. <laughs> Do I have elbow pain? That's something that's never happened here, and I haven't heard any any of the people. Sugasan at the moment upstairs, she's uh, got a little bit of trouble with her her shoulder. She's getting to the age where it starts to happen, and I, I think uh, we've told her just you should just mix up your work a little bit more. Elb for me, elbows have never anything that I've had any trouble with. 
back at the moment now seems to be okay. You know, I threw my back out a couple of weeks ago, so I can't I can't sit here and brag. Never have any body problems. I did throw my back out in what I feel is w not related at all to work. But uh, other than that, I don't I don't have any problems. Wrists are totally okay. Elbows I wouldn't have even have thought about it if you hadn't mentioned it. We come back to the same conversation again and again and again. You know, any given job or work or posture, if you do it too long, will uh, will bother you. So just switch up, switch out. Do it for a while, come back. Do it for a while, come back. One of the reasons I'm sure I threw my back out a couple of weeks ago is because I spent too much time at this bench. After not doing intensive work for months, I came down and did two long, long, long days and, and paid the price for it. You know. But usually, no. The work here is stress-free. There's no strong, tense use of muscles. And when I was younger and doing it like crazy, you know, like. 12, 14 hours a day and stuff in the years when I was, you know, trying to make a go of this back at the beginning. Well, I was younger, so it was okay, but I didn't have any problems then. I used to work nuts, you know, morning session, afternoon session, evening session. Ishikawa-san, hello! Kami dashimashita, o washi. Ishikawa-san's working on a back number, one of the prints for the gift season. We, we've looked through our gift catalog and some of the ones were a little bit low on inventory. So the printers, during the time they are in between other jobs, have been catching up on the restocking some of the prints that we're getting low in stock on. The one she's doing right now, I think it's number 82 in the catalog, the one called the Weaver. It's the first time she's done this one, so she's finding it uh, interesting and fun. How's the eyesight, Dave? Whatever, I'll be in another. When's the next checkup? January, April, July, October will be the next, next checkup. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. The pattern that we're carving here, we, the pattern that I'm carving here, royal we, royal we, the pattern that I'm carving, it's a crisscross. There's going to be vertical colored bands, and then on one of the other color blocks, there are matching horizontal color blends, bands. So the mushrooms here are in a basket that has a cloth with your typical tablecloth type crisscross color. So it'll give us three colors. Color A, one of the bands is going to be green, the other band is, I think, going to be a beige color. I'm not quite sure exactly yet. We're going to see how it works. And then there will be a crisscross area where the bands cross and give a third color.
visible, visible, not wandering away. Hey, Dave, hope you're well. Yeah, I'm fine, 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 fine. Could not be better. Well, that's not true. Could be better, but yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. What do I think now about being, <laughs> about being a subject of King Charles III? This is funny. I don't, well, I mean, I'm sorry, it's not funny. I mean, it's, it's you know, the lady has gone, as, as, as we all expected, you know, whatever. But how do I feel about being a subject of King Charles III? The girls yesterday were on to this. They had read the news report. For most of us now, this is Queen Elizabeth was the only monarch any of us knew, and, and stuff like this, stuff like this. And I'm like, no, no. King Charles III, we were talking about this yesterday. He's the sixth monarch I've, quote, lived under. In Britain, he's the third. That's how far back I go. <laughs> when I was born, it was King Charles VI. I was born under the reign of King Charles VI. So, so no, George, 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 George VI. I was born under the, in, in the reign of King George VI. Then when I was a certain age, he died and Elizabeth came on and now she's gone and King Charles came on. So in England, I've seen three monarchs and here in Japan, I've seen three. Queen Elizabeth II ruled for 70 years. I, when she was, when she, when he died, I must have been, uh, whatever, he'd work it out. You can see he, he died in the spring of, of 52. I was born in the autumn of 51. Did you see him even if you don't have memories? No, I was like six months old when the king died, so I don't remember this, but just when you look at the dates, I was alive during the reign of King George VI. <laughs> I lived through the entire Elizabethan era, and now I'm ready for the next one. And here in Japan, the same thing. When I came here to live, the, the wartime emperor was still the emperor. The, the Hirohito was still the emperor when I came here. So this business of, of changing monarchs, like uh, this is for me, well, you, a sixth time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I predate Queen Elizabeth. That's how old this dude sitting here is. <laughs> well, she's older than me. She was 96, of course, but she became, she ascended the throne during my lifetime. We've got, all got this impression that she's been there, that there's no living human beings left from before her, and that's not how it works. So. The question then becomes, how many more am I going to see? I don't know, it depends on the decisions Charles makes. I'm 70, he must be 70, what is he now, 72, 73? Charles, I don't remember. We're both born in November, he must be 73. He must have been born in, yeah. We're both in, no, we're both November babies. But the news, you know, things are what they are. It's very much, of course, the end of an era, absolutely the same expression, you can say that anytime, but anytime somebody's been there for such a long time, it's clearly going to be the end of an era type feeling. So. What was Henry VIII's like? Let me think about that for a while. I have to go back, you know. <laughs> so, so. My mother counts the popes. Yeah, that's what I don't keep track of. I'm sorry. I don't know. The other, the other thing is too. You think about British prime ministers. I know. I'm like Churchillian. <laughs> they talk about Churchill. I don't think you know. Again, I'd have, to, I'd have to look this up. I don't remember these things. I think I was born. The guy before Churchill was what was he? Attlee. So I think I was born when Attlee was there, and just after I was born. Churchill came back for the second time round. So I, I was, a, a, me and Churchill, you know. <laughs> it was Julius Caesar a good guy? So Churchill was prime minister and I was young, his second term, yeah. Whether, I think, I don't, again, I do I have to look it up, I don't know. No idea, no idea. <laughs> So, 
Now, we have a loose piece of wood here we gotta deal with, joking and joking and joking. Remember the other day when we were carving the key block to this? Those old timers on this stream, do you remember a few weeks ago? I can't identify the location of, I think it was somewhere around here. I put an arrow on the block because I thought I had chipped one of these pieces of wood. And when it came time to clear away nearby, I was worried, so I put a little bit of glue underneath in case it was gonna move. Now we haven't moved ahead of the printing yet. I'm not sure, I think it was this place here. So I was a bit nervous about that. We have the same thing here today now. I think, I think we have a piece of this block that is moving and that wants to chip off. And I think it's this little triangle here. And yeah, it is, it's moving. Can you see it? I push down on this pink part here and it is moving. So underneath here, we got to do the same thing. We've got to be proactive here. And I'm going to put a little dab of glue. The old craftsman never used glue. Everything was held together by other stuff. So I'm going to try and skim, shim a little bit of glue under here. In fact, to do this, what I'm going to do, before I clear off the neighbor part here, I'm going to pry this up. I'm going to lift this up. There we go, it is, it's coming up. And I'm gonna take a bit of glue and wiggle it under there. This is all a pro, uh, what's the word, when you're doing something in advance of a problem happening. I'm gonna squeeze that down onto that glue, yep. And hold it for a minute or two here. Proactive, prophylactic, it only is prophylactic, proactive, okay, whatever, whatever, yeah. Preventive maintenance, more glue. Look at this, Dave has stooped so low. Okay, we've put a tiny bit of glue underneath there and I'm going to leave that little square alone now rather than tempt fate and play with it. We'll just let that little piece of glue harden. I will come back and take away this piece of wood and we'll be good to go. Should I be ashamed of even touch a glue? I don't think so. My God, I don't think so. If we popped it out, we would fix it. But the idea is to avoid popping it out. This is again, is part of experience. If you looked at me X years ago, I mean like X decades ago, I wouldn't have caught that. I would have just been moving ahead, chim, 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 click, 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 click. I wouldn't have caught that little fraction of movement and I would have moved ahead and pop out it would have come. Good to go. We're good to go. The glue will not be super waterproof over time. But what's going to happen is this. The, the, the thing is now it's held in place so it's not going to move. And the first thing that's going to happen to this block is we're going to dump pigment and glue on the top surface of it. Especially when we use the black block for the key block. The, the bokuju we use is, has glue all mixed in it. And being printed the first few times toughens this up toughens it up, it, it sticks it up and it gets it all uh, uh, tight. I really, if I can't say never say never, but uh, the times I've done something like this, the times that it has later become a problem are, I can't say never, but basically never. You know.
the way I do this, you know, if, if one of those old carvers was watching me, he would just be, you know, so frustrated because I'm really not doing this in any kind of an efficient way. You know, it's something about my personality, you know. I, whatever, the, the stuff gets done, the work gets done, and we get the good prints out, and the prints are nice. Things are working. But look at this. Dave, he's gone through these little things, one square, one square, one square, one square at a time. So, and I get in there, and I pop out the edge of the square, but then I can't get the middle out with this same tool, so I put the tool down, pick up another tool, get in here, and then take out the little piece that's left in the middle. So that's it. We've now got one little area done. Puts the tool down, picks up the other tool, starts again and carves. And if you think the guys in the old days would have done it that way, then you, you've got another thing coming. There's no way. They were all about efficiency, of course. They were craftsmen who wanted to get the thing done as quickly as possible. And they would, of course, they would cut with A tool first all over, then go back and use B tool to do the B part. Of course, common sense, you know. What stops me from doing that is something about the the control freak aspect of this. I can't move on to the next stage leaving that thing behind. I don't know, it's just whatever. It's just the way it is. Taran san, if he's watching today, he just shakes his head because he's training with Asuka Sensei to do it a sensible, common, common sensible way. You know? So in that sense, I'm, I'm doing this sort of as a hobbyist. And we had that. We talked about this in the Remembering a Carver video. Ito-san saw me and my work and what I was doing. And without any evil intent, he, he mentioned that to me. It's a hobby for you. It's a hobby. And in that sense, he was exactly right. And I remember in that video saying, oh, no, it's not. I'm a craftsman, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do good work. And I do do good work. But any number of little things along the way will give a person like Ito-san the sense Dave just doesn't get it. Dave is not a real craftsman. And to that way of thinking, they're right. But, like, whatever, I am who I am, you know. And at the end of the day, we are making some pretty good prints. And we're doing so quite efficiently. We don't have to worry about Toyota type efficiently. It doesn't matter to us. I don't know where you guys are going with your conversation. I don't know. Someone in the chat there just mentioned they're happy that Dave is trying to mention how much his work differs from perhaps the more traditional way. There's a few things to say about that. One is that there isn't anybody alive now doing this who does it quote the real honest to goodness handed down to the ages traditional way. They are all gone. Throughout the entire course of the 20th century, the whole thing decayed hugely. And even people who I respect hugely today, Asuka Sensei, I got tons of respect for him. He's doing it the old way. Yeah, right. You know, he's doing it in a modern day adaption of the old way. He's the most traditionally trained of all of us who are still doing this, but he would be the first one to, to admit that if we compared, if we could compare a Meiji-era carver with him or me, it just would be night and day, night and day, speed, absolute speed. We've touched on this on these streams before. The Hasui video that we showed you, that we talked about, linked to a few weeks ago. Maeda Kintaro is in there. And it looks like it's on fast forward, the speed, the way the guy's doing it. It's not. 
that the side of the thing you can see the cigarette smoke curling up in the air. It's not fast forwarded, but it looks like it. Those guys just boogied along. The noise outside is the vacuum cleaner from the hotel across the street. It's our usual time. Is there a planned video for rewrapping a Baron? Well, I've got one already online up there somewhere. I know I'm not. No, no. No, the next video planned is Dave's next video, and it will be one of two things. It will either be Beginnings Part 3, or it will be the David's Choice about Suribono Prince. It'll be one of those two. That's done, but that's corners there. Let's leave the corner. That's done. Are we done then with the space? Not one, two, three, here we are. More. More, more, more. On we go, onward and upward. Did Sukusan do a rewrapping? I don't think so. Cameron was you know, going to work with her on that, but life went in other directions and that never got done. Cameron recorded it, but there was no audio explaining how it was done. I'm not sure if that's as far as they got. They had a plan for it. I don't know. I don't know. It's extremely difficult to make a video like that. I've done one, and it's up there somewhere. But it's really, really difficult. With your hands all crunched up and people trying to see what you're doing and all your hands are mixing up, but you can't stop to show the camera because the bamboo skin dries and then you can't continue. So it's got to be made like a movie. You've got to do three, four, five, six attempts and then splice together from different ones to show it. It's a major production. The one I've got up there is Sadako Film. We did two. I wrapped two skins and we copied and pasted from the two different versions to try and, uh, to try and get a full stream of it.
Oh, she wrapped one on the Times Burn Bright video. Really? Can somebody link to this then? Someone says, would love to see you give a recorded tour of the Sumida Hokusai Museum. Been there, done that. <laughs> I've done that with NHK. They took me over there when the place opened up. NHK took me over there to give the, the talk and give the guided tour for a program they were doing about this. Well, we <laughs> tell the same story again and again. I don't know. <laughs> It was okay, it went well, I did my job, but partway through I really had to bite my tongue. <laughs> I really had to bite. We get to the third floor, the sp second floor, third floor, the place where the print, the masterwork, you know, they've got to show the wave, they have a copy of the wave. And NHK is on me with the cameras here, the red light showing we're walking around and the, the director is pointing me, here's, you know, where to go, where to go. I go over there and there's the wave in the distance, so I say, there it is, the one that we've all come to see. I forget the words I said, it's on NHK's website or something. There it is, the one we've all come to see, let's get close up with it. And me and the camera, and the camera shows me walking and then there's the wave and we get closer to the wave. And as we get like within one or two meters of it, I can see what's going on. This thing is a photocopy, they don't have the actual print. But there we are, I'm in this now, I'm swimming, I'm in it, we stand there, I look at the camera, and what do I do? It's fake, don't come, run away. I don't know what to say, it was a photocopy, but I don't remember, it's on, it's on the program, you'd have to dig it up. Dave is frantically thinking about something to say that doesn't make him into a liar, but that doesn't do whatever, and I forget what I said, I don't even remember at all, it's something about, the, and now we can see the reason that this print has become so iconic when you get close up to it like this, the power of the wave, I forget what bullshit I said, I don't even remember anything not to talk about the actual woodblock print itself, which was a flat photocopy. We finish the thing, the camera goes down, I met the producer, what, like what, but he says, well, we, they can't show it, it just fades too much, so, you know, so, and he said, people have paid to come into this museum, he said, well, actually, this is explained down at the front. And we get down to the front later on, and the place where you buy your ticket and stuff like this, there's the price, adults 250, you know, seniors 550, whatever it is, all, all the numbers there. And at the side of that display panel, way down in one corner, it says, in tiny, tiny, tiny type, like eight point font, whatever, some of the prints on display are replicas. And it says this in English, Chinese, Korean, and Japanese. <laughs> Am I not supposed to talk about this? I don't know. Well, they got to do this. They got to do this. I know you go to the Metropolitan, there's some sculpture, and it's a plaster copy because you can't, like, always put the original. Is the Mona Lisa the real one nowadays, or do they hide it in the back room? I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, if I'm not supposed to say this, I don't know, whatever. But uh, I get it. I understand what's going on. But... And honestly speaking, for Mr. and Mrs. Suzuki, who go to the museum, they went to the Hokusai Museum, they saw a bunch of Hokusai prints, they saw the, the animatron of Hokusai painting there, which is kind of cool. You look in this room there, and Hokusai's in there with his daughter, and he's an animatron. It's like Disney World, whatever. And then people go and see the Great Wave, and they see the wave, and they're happy. They don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But yeah, anyway, so someone's saying I should give a guided tour of it. As we said, I've been there, and I've uh, been there, done that. And, uh, you know, thank you. <laughs> For museums with the old ukiyo-e prints, it really is a paradox for them. Their, their job is to preserve and protect the stuff, and their job is to show it and educate people about it. And in the case of the old prints that are light sensitive, you can't do both at the same time all the time. You've got to pick and choose your moments. You can put stuff on display, but only for quite short periods of time. And you do have to understand that in the case of the old prints, not so much the new ones, like the one we're gonna make today here doesn't really get affected by this, but in the case of the old prints with very uh, very fugitive pigments, every minute that you've put that thing on display is uh, X minutes off its lifespan. 
And of course the room is dark, it's gloomy, there's no bright lights there. You know, they're doing what they can. And if you had the sign down in the lobby that says, attention all potential ticket purchasers. This is a nice museum, but please understand that the great wave that's on display upstairs is a color copy. If they did that in big type, you know, I guess X number of people would just turn around and walk out. Like, what's the point, you know? So I get it, you know, the museum, they're not evil people. They're not doing anything wrong. I was a little bit cheesed at the NHK producer in that they didn't like cue me in on this. They just let me, they want, they led me to this trap. And I could have, if I hadn't noticed what was going on, I could have spouted off all kinds of crap. To be here in the same room, in the presence with this piece of paper from 1732. We know Hoxai didn't touch it, but the printer, under his direct supervision, applied every drop of this pigment. And now, the iconic result stands here, one meter in front of me. For me to drink in the spiritual energy, well, blah, 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 <laughs> whatever. <laughs> A bit more soul. I, I can't do it. I'll need to practice. I'll need to practice. <laughs> I'll need to practice. I just don't feel this stuff. <laughs> I don't feel this stuff. I gotta be careful how sarcastic I am about this. I don't know. There are people who do that and believe it. It's okay. I should just keep quiet, actually. Maybe one year, April the 1st, maybe I'll, well, it's probably not going to happen, but that would be one idea on April 1st to make a video like that or something. I don't know. <laughs> Cameron had a great plan for April 1st for one of these years. This is three or four years ago. He had a great idea for this. We didn't do it because I, I did, I would, whatever, we were busy. We had lots of stuff going on. But Cameron had a just, he was just, my oh, Dave, we have got to do this. We've got to do this, you know. And the conversation, he was showing me something that was on Amazon. And it was a Bob Ross wig. <laughs> and he's like, we've got to do this. <laughs> uh, we never did, but whatever. A Bob Ross Afro wig. They're all over Amazon. I guess people buy them at Halloween, you know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I wouldn't be able to do it without cracking up. <laughs> it's beat the meat out of this, you know, whatever. Whatever, so, so, so. <laughs> Whatever, whatever, whatever. I would, someone says I would pay for that. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should take reservations. <laughs> How much is it worth to you? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God, you know. But the thing about it, what makes that thing difficult to do is that, you know, Bob did those things. It's blank canvas to finish product in 30 minutes while he talked. I can't do that with a woodblock print, so I don't know, you know. Actually, I guess we could do it, you know, if I got a specific print, not the carving job. If it was all about the printing, and we got brushes and colors, so that would be the thing. Forget the carving, just get a specific block ready. Get some paper ready, get some pigments ready. 
and think about how we do it with a camera over my shoulder or something. Or we, we could actually mock it up, you know. And we got brushes and we can beat the brushes. And <laughs> we can do stuff. <laughs> it would be so much fun. I wouldn't be able to keep a straight face, though, absolutely. I'd never keep a straight face to it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Three gazillion views. <laughs> so, so, if there was anything that was going to melt the internet, it would be that. And we could tag it ASMR or something, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think I've got nothing else to do. How long do we have till April 1st? But I'd have to study up, and I'll, I'm, I'm overall I'm roughly familiar with the Bob Ross thing, but I haven't, you know, watched a whole bunch of his videos. So uh, what I would have to do is uh, sit down and do my homework. I'd have to study up what the uh, what the gestures, what the catchphrases are. Try and think about how to do this. You know, I'd have to watch a ton of the video first. So. Could we do it live? I don't know, in 30 minutes. How are we doing for time here? What have we got? It's now nine o'clock. <coughs> There's no Ayano-san today because it's, of course, Saturday. There's only going to be me. Well, Ishikawa-san's working upstairs. She beavers away. Doesn't care what day of the week it is. But the regular staff would never be here on Saturday. So what's going to be happening here? Well, show and tell. What, I, what I've done for show and tell here today, there's going to be no, you can keep your socks on today. For show and tell, what we've done is the match label prints that we showed the other day, I went and did some homework. I didn't do homework. Ayana-san did some homework. She studied up on those with me. So we can report back with the same prints we showed in the last show and tell. And uh, it looks like they had a lot of fun with wordplay and puns. And, and fooling around and there's some stuff that I didn't catch while we were showing them so we will look again at those but I won't take the full 15 minutes probably so uh, what we will do then is uh, we'll look at those labels and uh, to see, it, see what they mean, see what all the wording was that we couldn't figure out. And then if and when there is time left over, uh, the folder is still beside me, those uh, boat menus are still here. So today will be a bit of a mixed show and tell. We'll uh, finish off those match labels and then we'll fill up the time with uh, the boat, boat menu book, which always is full of uh, neat stuff to look at and laugh at. Laugh at being what we're ignoring, you know, to, to over over. So show and tell today will be quiet. It, you're not gonna if you miss it, you haven't missed anything special. So uh, don't worry. It'll be a catch up, a catch up fill in show and tell today. Have I any shoda? <coughs> I'm not sure who you mean by shoda. 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 Are we talking about a 20th century artist? If so, then no, I don't have anything like that at all. I'm not sure of your reference, I'm sorry. Give me a bit more information here. Shoda.
let's see, Koho Shoda, Koho Shoda. I'm sorry, I'm really not getting this reference. Is to say Koho, is that the name that Watanabe Shozaburo was using for those prints of his own that he snuck into their catalog? If that's the reference, then absolutely no, I wouldn't have such a thing. I would never, ever, 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 ever be able to afford such a thing. Is that the reference? One of the early Watanabe Shin hunger prints that is assumed to be designed by Shozaburo-san himself to sort of show the other guys, here's what I'm looking for. But I'm not sure if I've got the reference right, I'm sorry. Picky, picky work, eh? It's actually quite peaceful work, you know. I'm a bit back and forth and back and forth today, but work like this is really quiet and peaceful. This is the last stage on any piece of wood before it goes up to the printers. This final clearing. And normally in, in my old personal private life, you know, when I was doing this sort of stuff, at this point now, I can listen to music easily when you're doing your uh, key line carving, when you're doing delicate carving, it's difficult to do it when there's music with a good strong beat or something. And when you're working with the persuader also, you can't use music that has strong rhythm because your persuader starts to like work with the music instead of where you need to be working on the block. But when it gets to this stage like this, there's no, there's no rhythm at all in the work. I'm listening to music, whether it be loud or whatever, or, or with a rhythm or without a rhythm doesn't make any difference. So the old David back in his own private workshop, when he's got to this stage, he's just happy there. The windows are open, he's cranked it up, uh, listening to whatever kind of music is going on. And you know your print is almost done, it's getting ready for printing, so you're in the last stage. It's generally a, yeah, it's a happy here we go home stretch kind of a kind of a feeling even though this kind of work can be very 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 picky if there's been a lot of patterns in the print it's like this there's just endless little stuff to take away and you can't do it with larger chisels of course because it's all like little tiny detail so this can be time consuming but it's also it's also good fun Trying to keep track truck as a chap too, you know. What are you talking about? John Nagy. I did that stuff. I did a bunch of those. I got some of those for Christmas. There was one with the snow scene and some trees and the tree shadows went across the ruts in the snowy road. I remember doing that one with, with charcoal pencil. 
I did those, or some of them. Learn to draw with, what's the guy's name? John Nagy. Learn to draw with John Nagy. I remember that. Didn't learn the lessons very well, but uh, I did do the thing as, as a Christmas present activity. I don't think it's something I would have asked for. Can I have one of those for Christmas, Mom, please? I don't think I would have asked for it. I think it's just something they must have thought Gabe might like to try. I don't know. I don't remember anything about the origin or the follow-up. But I just remember, somebody's mentioned the name now, and yeah, I remember that. Learn to draw with John Nagy. There was also something marine, something with a boat. Something, the snow scene with the trees, I remember that, and there was something to do with a boat. I also remember having a huge problem with smudging. Something about that snow scene. There's like, I guess you're drawing with a pencil or charcoal pencil or something. And Dave here is a lefty. There's something now, now that I'm thinking about this and trying to remember this, there's something about this. There's the white piece of paper and you got your thing and your trees start to come and your shadows start to come. But bit by bit by bit as I'm doing this, the paper goes gray and there's smudges and there's smears. And I guess it's lefty Dave with his pencil rubbing his left hand all over the whole thing. I don't remember a, a Calvin moment where throw it away. I don't remember that. But I do remember, my God, what a mess. <laughs> Something like this, you know. Was it charcoal we were working with? I don't remember that. That I don't remember. Could have been. I don't know. The details here are obviously clearly escaping me. Also, must have been at some point in one of those Christmases long past, there must have been a paint by numbers set somewhere in there. I don't have any specific vivid memories of it, but I do remember that there's this thing and there's this board with the lines and the numbers, and you got your paint cups with all the numbers. So, at some point, myself or my brother or sister, maybe I don't remember, must have. Uh, must have had a, a paint by numbers. Uh, it would have been a Christmas present in our family. Stuff like that would only ever appear as, uh, as Christmas presents, of course. You know.
Okay, here we are. Another one. So we it's still not finished. There's we're done here. One, two, three, four. Tell you what, let's pop out that last little missing bit. Otherwise, I'll forget. If I don't pop this out now, it won't get popped out. Place has fired up their music already. I guess they're going to get an early start today. It's the weekend. The music you hear in the background, it's from the audio system at the Korean hot dog place. <coughs> the kimono shop, they dis it's both. You're asking, did they move or is it gone? Both are true. They disappeared first. They, they cut and run for the first couple of years. They are now back. The same company is back. And actually, if we had a straight line of view through the whale restaurant, we could see them. The kimono company that used to be here next door is now in the Richmond Hotel, the Marugoto Nippon building, up on the fourth floor. There's a new restaurant gay, a group of restaurants up on the fourth floor. There's yakitori, there's tendon, there's this, there's sushi, there's steak, there's all this. And in the middle of the restaurant group is our friends are our friends, the kimono shop that used to be next door. There are many, many, many kimono rental shops in Asakusa now, back up and running. They are catering now to the domestic market, which is um, big, major, major, major. Okay. I will need Scissors. I don't know if I have scissors. I don't know. I've got a knife. Can I get away with a knife or should I use scissors? I don't have scissors. Here we go. Okay, if you have a delicate constitution, close your eyes. <clears throat> okay, these prints that we got the other day, they will be headed up to the bath soon. It turns out that these prints are really quite nice. There's lots of things of interest in them. And when Ayano-san looked at them yesterday, Ayano-san and Aoyama-san looked at them yesterday, and they made some notes for me on the characters, the kanji characters I couldn't read. And they came to the conclusion that, yes, indeed, these are in the wrong order. Also, the conclusion, I think they're in the wrong order, but I come up with a different order than what they come up with. So in preparation for getting these things in the bath and soaked off, we are now going to tape them off their backing sheet here. And once they've been uh, soaked, they will then live in the albums one by one by one. So let's get them off. No, we're not getting them off, just get them separated. So we're not going to sit here and do this right now, but what's going to have to happen? They have to come off this backing paper first. Now this one, they're only tacked at the corners. 
if you look at this, they're only tacked at the corners on this backing paper, but they are also glued to other backing paper underneath this. And when you're taking something just off the corners, it's really, 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 really dangerous. If I tried to pull these off now, almost certainly I would lose the corner for some of these prints. So we're not going to do that job today, not in any way. We are just going to look at some of the prints themselves, along with help from my team here who has read some of the... Uh, some of the backing here, some, some of the information. A couple of things as we go along. Okay, well, let's just get going on this here. Let's move in. How far can we zoom before we lose focus? Hang on a sec, let me get my... Let's find a good focus so we can do this properly. Do we have focus? Okay, we are good to go. We are good to go. <coughs> okay, let's find the one that, uh, let's try and get them on over here. So I'll put them up where I can see them. Okay, there was no doubt about the consensus on the first one here. This one is clearly, it's the one for the first month. And the full reading of the characters here, it's clean. It's Hatsu, which, how should I do this? It's Hatsu first Sora Sky Tsuki. Hatsu Sora Tsuki. The first sky month. And always when we're seeing a seasonal group of stuff in Japan, kite flying is in in, 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 indelibly associated with the new year. So there's no question about what we're seeing here. This is the one for the first month. What the two little clowny characters are doing, I'm still, I really don't know. It looks like a guy with a quiver of arrows. I really don't know. The next one that seems in the original group, it was marked as the second one. And that is this one. And the characters also seem to point to this. This is Ume Miru Ski. And Ume, of course, is plum blossoms. And I myself don't in any way think this looks like a plum tree. But Ayano-san and Aoyama-san both said the same. Yeah, it's okay. It's a plum tree. It's a plum tree. I, I beg to differ, but whatever. I wasn't about to die on that hill. We can accept this as February. This is Ume Mi Ski. Plum looking month. The next one also seems to be, without too much doubt, the one for March. It's the Doll Festival, which is March the 3rd, and the characters we have here are Sakura Tsuki, the month of cherry blossoms. Now here again, if I was just picking a random month for it, I would pick April to be the month of cherry blossoms, but you can't have the two things side by side, but there they are. So this is Sakura Tsuki, seems to be the third month here. Now the names they've made up here seem to be parodies on traditional names. There are a series of old-fashioned names for the months that are in common use, but this is not them. Now the original series now had this as being the one in the fourth, not this one, just a minute, no, where I made where, stop, 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 stop. The original series had this one as being in the fourth month. And Aoyama-san said no, and Ayana-san said no. And what they are putting this is, they're putting this as October. And the, the kanji is yo, as we sort of, as we tried to read the other day, there was somebody even in the stream reading it, yo tsuki. It's sun, moon. Sun, moon. The month of sun. I don't know. I'm going to put this one aside. I, the original person thought it was April. My team thinks it's October. I don't know. Next in line was this one. We have now Natsu Hatsu Ski, summer beginning month. The summer beginning month. Then we have some ladies out at the seashore 
gathering seashells. She sells seashells at the seashore. And it's a little bit of a parody on an old Hiroshige print because the same design exactly comes up in a famous Hiroshige design of ladies at the seashore. Except in Hiroshige's design, they are showing less leg. <laughs> this one too. <coughs> so anyway, my team here is thinking this is January, February, March, April. They think it's April or May. I don't know. We'll line them up here after we've gone through them. Where's the next one? Sanaitsuki for May. Hang on a second here. Where are we? This one was next in the original series. And this is Sanaitsuki. And this is a early or a fast. It probably means early. And this is seeding or planting month. So the month when early planting and seeding would be going on. And Ayano-san, she's tabbing that as that would be maybe for May, the fifth month. Could be, could be, could be. Next was, where are we here, excuse me. Next up was this one. And again, a character that I was completely unable to read. This is the something summer month. And it was Toko. Toko Natsuki. Toko Natsuki. Toko Natsuzuki, remind me, Ano. Oh, I've forgotten. Italy. Help, help, help. Toko, Toko, Toko. Always summer month. Kaiju one is gone here. Constantly summer. So this sort of could fit in. You tell me anywhere. July or August or whatever. Away you go. The next one is really, really, really a puzzle. And it means waking up after sleeping. Nezametsuki. The month of waking after sleeping. The month of, of uh, getting up, arousal, whatever. And we have a pre-war little red sports car. Now at this point I'm starting to think that there is a lot of hidden meaning in here that had made a lot of sense to the guys who made these things in this particular group and that outsiders like us coming later who don't know the in-jokes that these guys were making are faced with just trying to figure out what on earth was going on here. The next one is funny. There is a bit of a pun here that we can actually get, and I should have been able to read this the other day, but it, the, what confused me was the fact that the, this is month, this is looking, and this also is month. We have the same character twice. This is Skimi Zuki. Skimi, Skimi, looking at the month. This is normally October, and we see a blue sky with a round moon, and this is the Skimi season. The weather has become cool, the hot summer is finished. We have rabbits, we have the, the mochi, and this is Skimi Zuki. And clearly, this now is a joke. We have the round white object that we are supposed to admire. And I guess in this picture we have round white objects that we are supposed to be admiring. And it's Tsukimi Tsuki. And they've given the same kanji here a bit of a different scribble because this is its calligraphy. And this totally confused me the other day. But yes, now that we see it, it is obvious to anybody who gets it. So whether this, <laughs> do you tell me, whatever, she is looking at the moon or she is the white round object that we are supposed to be enjoying. That's this one, Skimi. We then have, <laughs> where are we now? I, got, I should have put these in order, hi. The one that we had in the business for October, and this is Ryogetsu. Ryogetsu. Um, oh, I've forgotten again. Help please, ryo, 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 the kanji. It's a common kanji here, ryo getsu. Funny enough, the staff, both Aoyama-san and Ayano-san are saying that this one should be July. They've tabbed this. It's, it's nagare, flowing, flowing, the month of flowing. There's two left here, and they are both sort of easy and obvious. And this is Yuki 
Machi Ski, the month in which we are uh, waiting for the snow. So the only thing you can say for this one is this would make sense for November. And then the last one, finally, and again, the kanji here is an older, older kanji that's not in use. I would never have been able to read this. They have both read this as do, do gets it. Do gets it. And do, in the dictionary, it tells me this is candle. Do, candle or wax. Do gets it. This is what we're looking at in terms of the kanji here. And obviously December, there's nothing else we could look at for December, but that's that. So uh, which one goes in which order? I am still extremely confused. But there was one more print involved with the set. Our first one. Nenchu Gyoji Juni Kagetsu, six months of activities in over the year. And we have very much, we have head hot, feet cold. Rokugatsu no Fuji no Yama. Head hot, feet cold, Mount Fuji in June. And I kind of get that. If you think of Mount Fuji in June, this is before climbing season opens. There's still snow up there, but down here in June, it's hot and the rainy season and getting hot. So Mount Fuji itself in June has a cold head and hot feet. Is that what they're trying to say here? I don't know. Head, yeah, what did I say? Head, did, I, did my mouth come up the wrong way? Head cold. Head, cold, feet, hot. Is that my, did my mouth come up the other way around? Thank you, sir. <laughs> what do I know about this stuff? So, as, as I said, Mount Fuji in June ha is cold up at the top and it's warm down at the bottom. I'm sorry if my mouth put the things up backwards. So there's our set. Let's put them in now what seems to be the order then. This would be Let's go down and across. This would be January, February. This has to be March. There's no other way around for it. They are telling me, I'll follow their pattern here. They're telling me April is the opening of summer. This is April, January, February, March, April. May, they think, is the er early planting one. I think this is perhaps too soon for May. Then for June, they want tokonatsu. Where is that? Height. And this could fit anywhere. I got no problem with that. Then September, the one that I really don't have any idea. Ne ne Nezamitsuki, September. October, they are putting this train in October. It's the sun moon month. I have no idea. No idea. October. For November, the staff, uh, where am I? Just a minute, just a minute. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. No, August they wanted this one. September, they want this is For July, they want here. August, September, they want October, and they want November and December. And I am not in agreement with this, but this is the Japanese staff, my staff, looking at the characters and looking at the pictures and deciding what months they think it lines up with. And Dave here doesn't agree, but whatever. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, no way. August, I'll buy that. September, okay, October, November, December. I have a real problem with putting the August, uh, the, the October maple leaves into July. So be it. Anyway, okay, anyway, we're done with this now. Thanks so much. I've probably spent too much time on this. I'm sorry. We looked at the prints the other day and they were interesting, and now I've perhaps spent too much time on them. 
we're going to get them shot, we're going to get them photographed and put up on the website so you'll all be able to see them much more clearly and make your own decisions about what they are. Normally August, we wouldn't call August ski, ski, not at all. That would be October, but whatever. Anyway, there we are. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you very much. I'm going to get back to work now. I have a ton of, ton of things. So let me say, when was this published? This is just pre-war. This is almost exactly 100 years ago. The best date I can put on this would be middle 1920s. It could be as late as 1930, probably middle 1920s. So this is now in its, it's about as old as the Queen was, whatever. It's in its middle 90s. They're still in very good condition. They've been abused twice. They've been stuck down in two different albums. We will be able to get them off and save them from that fate. Hey, thanks so much, guys. Thank you. I'll put the outside up. And I'll get back to my carving. Still quiet, but it's going to be busy, busy, busy day. Okay, thanks very much. I'll see you in a couple of days, those of you who can stand some more of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye for now. See you then.